started checking to see if some of the people okay said uh, the same thing as you well i mean uh, josh hamble was basically walking through his role I Tyler know, Gibson you... was walking through his. Ty Tyrese was, Tyrese was walking through his role. Tutorial was walking through his role. Uh, the girl Rose was walking through her role. The uh, the mother and father were basically thrown in there so they could cut them out when they do the cut for the television side. I mean, they had nothing to do. Uh, Daddy's gotten fat, so <laughs> but um, but um, there was it was everything was secondary to the Transformers. Well, they were the main star. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and here's part of it. One, some of the things that surprised me is number one is I was not expecting to see John Malkovich. Yeah. Or Francis um, Francis uh, McDormand. I know um, Malkovich actually was a. He, he, he was sort of. He, he, sometimes John Malkovich gets sort of um, Johnny Depp weird. So. <laughs> well, and one of the biggest surprises of all was Patrick Dempsey. Because Patrick, oh, yeah, he plays one mean sob. I mean, oh, this he, guy. He was has, a good. Bad he's guy. got a really mean look to him. Well, you know, we've never seen him in a bad guy role. I know it's just like he could play the uh, Irish mafia you know, hitman I'm, I'm or something. I'm wondering if like Dempsey is like. I mean, now his career could go two different directions. Yeah. I mean, as a you know, as a good guy or as a bad guy, because he was. I mean, that was a big surprise. Yeah, well, McDreamy is also, I heard, they said McDreamy is also McMeany now. So. Oh, really? Yeah, they said the guy, he, he moves so well into pure evil, and he was pure evil. But, but he, he was very convincing. Oh, yeah. There, there's some people like John Turturro, it's like, that role is, that is just him. Well, yeah, he's just a music you know, classic and a-hole, so. And he, he's really good in that role, and it just really, really works. He, okay, he's, he's done that all his life. I know, but that's just that's just him. But uh, like I said, though Dempsey, though is he, you know, and he probably got a better career at this stage of life playing, you know, these really good. Okay, uh, like the Cesar Romero role. Where Cesar Romero was always the good-looking gangster. Mm -hmm. You know that he's got this heart of he's got this. He doesn't really want to be bad. My father was responsible for this, and I was born into this, so just accept it like I do. Mm -hmm. But then he pushes the boundaries to show he's just plain mean. I mean, this guy's got to, you know, he's going to get nothing out of destroying the earth, so he's got to do it anyway, because he can. It's, that's the whole process. Why does he do what he does in the movie? Because he can. Mm -hmm. His dad has nothing to do with it. He just, can, he can, I can his have... His dad was an excuse. His dad is an excuse. He wants to, he basically, he, he's a, you know, if I can't have power, then the hell with everybody else. So, mm -hmm. he's very mean and nasty. He is the, okay, if you look at, on the bad side, it's not the, it's not the um, Decepticons that are gluing it together. It's Patrick Dempsey. He's so rotten. <laughs> so... Decepticons are just okay. Op, uh, uh, see uh, the uh, you know the, uh, the main Decepticon, Megatron, is basically a busted up device to start off the movie. Well, you know one of the things that, which um, you had mentioned yesterday was the Autobots, of course, are go from auto uh, the, the robots ro to robots, right? Yeah. The Decepticons they go to flying things and other things like that, but now they're all turning into autos. I that kind of a Hence, surprise. they never they never looked at any of the, the first two movies are, are looked at the TV. All you got to do is go to the hub, folks, and watch the hub, and you'll see the Transformers are on there every day, multiple What's times. What's the hub? That's that children's thing that they have oh. created over at this Comcast, I think. Oh, created. really? Yeah, which is going down today. But they're, they're having this weekend for the fourth, I think. Uh, uh, Transformers, a, a Transformers weekend. Prime weekend, folks. Oh, fun. Well, you, you know who else kind of surprised me? Is um, can Jiang play Jerry Wang? Oh yeah! Don't you love he played Jerry Wang? You know the chief Yahoo. I know. <laughs> guy is that was a, his name. The guy is a okay a fruitcake. I mean, total. He did a great job in that role as a know, fruitcake, though. Yeah, I think what it, I, I, my guessing is they might have actually written that role for the guy that was on Heroes. That would have sort of been his sort of whack out character. At first, I thought that was him. Yeah. Because I, there was the same. It's just like I think he copied that character. Uh, that would make He's sense. a little bit of uh, well, we can put it this way. You know what? Uh, Jerry is in the coffee room. Jerry is in the kitchen. Gary is in the flowers. 
Jerry is all over the <laughs> Oh, you know who else was a big surprise too is um, the assistant to John Turturro. Oh yeah, the what's his, the guy that played that Dutch? Which is, uh, that, oh, that's right, Dutch. Yeah, that was uh, what's his name there? Uh, which is Alan Trukak, is Dutch. I mean, T U D Y K. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him do other things. First, I've never seen him play a German. He t- I hate to tell people this, but he lost his accent at times. He did. But you know ship. what? He he was. It, it was really kind of funny to see how his character developed. Oh, he looked like he... Okay, we'll put it this way. He he tended to, to play like he was a gay fashion designer to start with. He did with. when he started, and then you will be totally surprised. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is a total change of character. <laughs> He's anything but a little mouse, so... <laughs> I think we got a boat sinking out there on us. Are you serious? The, that... Oh. I don't know if you can... I probably can't see with this one. The front, you know, the... The bow of the boat is going underwater as they're sailing. So, but no, but he's a basically he's a very. He's a, I think it's a change of pace from the characters he generally plays in movies and TV stuff too. So. Well, he he was actually he was really good. I would actually like to see him in another in another role. Well, no, I'd I mean, like to see Patrick Dempsey be a bad guy again because he was so good at it. Yeah. So, but uh, it, it's just there was a. I mean, okay, here it is. They whacked out this movie so bad in the end. How do you know that? I mean, how could there be a, a, a four? Of course there will be. Yeah, well, because nobody can count. What? Well, nobody involved can count. Such as we have six, we have six Ospreys taking off, and twelve Ospreys are shot down. Well, you know, you only saw the six that had taken off. There were other ones that you just didn't see. I know. I, I still can't. Okay. I'm going to explain it in a simple method. These people were all educated under the Democratic Party's method of education. And they couldn't, you know, if they don't take their shoes off, they can't count the Yeah, but see, you think about what's seen on the camera. I always think about what, you know, what... Okay. They don't show everything on the camera. I, I grew I grew up in a world where it, what it was called the, the everything within the scene was what was important. Ah. Uh-huh. So I actually watch what's going on. I also am a trained editor, folks. I I may not edit as sharply as I should on count on our stuff because I I do the cut and slice because I, I also was trained in a broadcast industry too. Well, also like Rosie, okay, who plays Carly. Oh God, I. Okay, I think she wore white through the entire movie. Oh, yeah, basically. Right? Okay. Uh, just watch carefully. There are certain times that the top she was wearing originally in the scene vanished, and she was wearing, a, you know, like a, a T-shirt in the rest of the scene. Well, you know, because we were sitting there talking about it. It's like, because it always looked clean, right? Yeah. And if you were going through all those action sequences, you're going to get some dirt on you somewhere along yeah. the line. Yeah, and watch her heels miraculously change. Tra- Change from heels to flats to heels to flats. So. But that's why they had script supervisors. Yeah, somebody. Well, uh, and then okay, here's the part of the movie. Every single reviewer that I've read said the same thing. What's that? At the end of the movie, there was this out of focus sequence when the uh, when the projector obviously went out of focus for a second. No, uh, somebody didn't cut that piece of the film out. Somebody uh-huh. let a piece. Somebody slipped up and let a piece of film stay in that was th- that was out of focus. It should never have been done. Well, because I don't... I mean, did they put this out on film? I would think it's all digital anyway. Well, n- yeah, but it's all digital, but they should have clipped it. It was a yeah. simple cut-cut. You just go in and whack it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm guilty, but I also actually... If it's important, I look at it. I mean, this morning I was editing a, a project, and... I'm looking, oh, the sound isn't on the first, I have no music at the beginning. Well, I actually caught that real quick, but all of the people that were doing it, nobody caught the fact that there was an out of focus piece at the end of the movie. Okay, so, for your final review. No, I mean. Or actually, well, this doesn't have to be final, but what do you think? Recommend, don't recommend? No, I mean, it, I, if you, okay, if you want something that is pure entertainment and pure action, it's probably the best 3D you're, you're, you're going to see until the next best 3D comes along. What's the best 3D movie I've seen? It's the best one. Yeah. It is flat out the best 3D By movie far. that has been made to this point, period. Right, because the other movies did not have as much 3D in it. I mean, this is one of those This is one of those movies. This is a 3D movie. You really movie. need to see it in the theater in 3D. This is going to suck on television. I mean, it is... Well, they'll have a 2D version. Nope, it will suck in 3D on 
um, on that it is not going to look the same. I mean, this is not designed for setting. Okay, the, where we were at, they had two big theaters and four small theaters. It was playing in the two big theaters in 3D. Well, if you're a stickler for following the plot. Oh God. Okay. The plot sucks. Then you will be disappointed. Yeah, right. uh, and and then they don't they didn't pay any attention to the script anyway. I mean, it changes. <laughs> I mean, we're talking a thing changes direction so many times. But basically, we had a climax, an anti climax, an anti climax, an anti climax. And at the end of the movie, watch the end. Oh, this is our. If you have, but you'll have the review up tonight. But uh, most uh, half at least, if you watch the movie. The end could have been done at least, in my opinion, one hour earlier well, you in know the what? film. It seemed like it was ending before. <laughs> oh yeah. You know. It like, was over, and then all of a sudden. But talk about getting good value for your theater money. Oh yeah, and actually, it's good value for us. Yeah. But it's horrible value for the theaters because of the long running time. Yeah, you don't put I it. I mean, I don't know how this is going to end up finally, as far as the numbers go. I mean. Oh, it can't it, possibly make the money that they think it's going to make. Just because it can't run as many times. Well, it, you, you, can, you add, it's why they put it in more screens. They put it in 4,400 screens, which is a thousand more because they're making up for the fact that. Um, they can't uh, do as many showings. They can't do as many showings. So. Well, you know. For the summer summer fun blockbuster seat in the theater, I think it's it's got to be one of the best. Yeah, no, I mean, at uh, least for this summer. I have okay. I've been doing this stuff since um, you know, like since Gorilla at Large, and it came from outer space. You know, I mean, some you know some three D thing way back. And I mean, it be, it beats the House of Wax, which I was in. It is the best three D movie that I have seen in my sixty four years in the business. Wow. But the trick is. The best, I but that is unless I did it, then mine would be superior because I know what I'm doing and they don't. Do, do you know? Do I look like I'm a smart ass? Uh huh. No, I just. But I, he I is, would but do he also it. does know. No, because the difference is, the difference between me and them is, I've actually worked in 3D. Yeah, I know the problem that of you have. Can't say that. If you've worked in it, you know what you have to do. What happens is, is that the people that are doing 3D, this one, it's one in and one out because most of these people won't ever do 3D again because it's a pain in the ass to do it. So I mean, um, uh, it, it just, you know, a lot, of, a lot of this movie was all green screen, pure and simple. The actor, I, I watched. Okay, I was well, watching. Because you had a lot of computer parts. Yeah, I was watching Ray Harryhausen last night talking about too that uh, about how it had to be done. You had to sit there and tell people, okay. Here is where Mighty Joe Young enters the screen. Look aghast at, at him coming there. Our Mighty Joe Young, uh, you know, he tears the top of your outfit down. Remember, the top of your outfit is being torn down. So, and look like you're actually having the top of your outfit torn down, even though you're not. Or, um, you know, it, it, it's these things that they, they are telling people. I mean, Brendan Fraser, for instance, was the king of the green screen. Try to get him in front of a green screen at the moment, because he, even though that is, he doesn't want to do it anymore. Oh, really? Well, because you spend a lot of your time, um, you spend a lot of your time talking to nobody but a wall. That reminded me of when they did um, Who Killed Who Killed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. Where, you know, the actors acting, they're doing it in the green screen, but they're responding to an animated character. Well, I mean, I know people that worked on that thing, and they thought that. I mean, they thought that this is the most ridiculous thing. I've ever it done in my out, life, it was but a it lot is. Of fun. But um, it goes back to is this. My my family goes back to the silent movie days. Silent actors would have had no problem working in 3D movies. No, no yeah. problem whatsoever because they were actors. The day, okay, for instance, um, Malkovich comes from the stage. Yeah. So does Turturro. They come from the stage. Ah, which is one of the reasons why they made me so such expressive actors. Uh, because they knew that you had to act for, you had to be expressive, so they overdid it. I think too it might have been a little bit why Shay LaBeouf uh, was overdoing things is because um, he, he his first two characters have been more wooden. This character was more expressive because this was a 3D production, and he was a three he was an expressive person when he started yeah. out. But it is. Uh, oh, interesting. I I could be curious to see though if if they're already planning Transformers 4. I already saw that. So well, I will expect, Transformers yeah. 4 be 3D or 2D? I think it's gonna. I think it'll be 3D, but without Michael Bay, would be my guess. 
Yeah, I would expect 3D because, you know, part of it is people have asked, is 3D here to stay? Well, let's just say the studio have discovered 3D as another revenue stream, so they can release it in 3D, 2D, have the different yeah. versions. And yeah, and basically, I mean, we actually, here's a tip too. We went in with, was it four different sets of 3D glasses to watch yeah, the movie? Yeah, that too. We're doing because we actually were lucky enough that we own our own 3D glasses and we can... And we they can, are better. We can decide our 3D glasses, which actually uh, were all real, real, real D. They're the same comp the same glasses you're using there, but our 3Ds are all better than the ones you're getting in the theater. Yeah. And our, you know, and, and I think our Gooner are the best ones that we have. So. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, the Gooners did show the best. But uh, here the trick is, uh, I mean, I would recommend at least until they change the way of projection. That if you really are serious about 3D, then you should probably get, uh, a, you know, 3D glasses, but a different types of systems, so that you yeah. can walk in with your own glasses. Well, you know, it does make a difference in the movie. Some people, you know, and maybe it's because we live here in LA, but some yeah. people, you know, it's they just go, and for us, it, it is pure entertainment, and we're in the, you know, we do cover the entertainment industry. Yeah, no, so but we do pay attention to all of that. Yeah. So it's been, it's been, like I said in the conclusion, that we did like the money, uh, we did like the movie enough that we screwed up the rest of the shooting we were going to do yesterday talking about it in the car. Well, and my recommendation would be when you go plan to have a great time, but go to a place where you can get unlimited refills yeah. for popcorn and, and drinks and, and be prepared to go to the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, at two and a half hours, there was a lot of people because the drinks, <laughs> it wasn't the popcorn, I think it was the, uh, the extra drinks. And um, uh, remember that 3D is always going to hit you about $5 more than if you go to a regular movie. Yeah. And you can see the 3D movie in 2D, but if I had my choice, I would really like to, I'd really like to see what Transformers look like in IMAX. Though. You know, I knew you were going to say that because we saw, we actually saw Pirates of the Caribbean, IMAX version in a regular 3D. Yeah. But we haven't seen it. Um, yeah, we also well, saw, know, we've saw seen Tron we in 3D at IMAX. Oh, we also. saw that at IMAX too. And it you is know, a different experience. It is a different experience for IMAX versus yeah, regular. It so. is a different, the picture is different. You can't get three, you can't wait. Our 3D glasses are no good for IMAX because they're bigger. But I think I would love to have, you know, go to IMAX and review what their version is like. This is a, this is a standard 3D version we saw in the so I guess until next time, until we do our next movie, which hopefully is coming up very shortly, is um, uh, this is Old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Wherever you're following us, subscribe to us. Follow our daily newscast in 3D, as well as our RSS feed. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And thank you once again for over 40 million links on the internet.